Well guys, it looks like we have some leaked benchmarks for the RTX 3050 and it looks to line up pretty much exactly with what I predicted yesterday based on this, um, let's just say less than perfect graph. When we looked at the Borderlands data, we saw that uh, the, um, again, this is, I was predicting to be a cherry picked result by Nvidia and we don't even need to talk again about how laughable it is to compare ray tracing performance against cards that don't have ray tracing performance, but that was yesterday's video. The point is we saw that we didn't quite double the performance of the RTX, uh, not RTX, of the uh, GTX 1650. And so then I pulled up a relative performance chart based on that and identified that I would expect the RTX 3050 to be perf performing in this ballpark around the level of a 1660 Ti or GTX 1070. Well, it looks like I was dead on in those predictions. What do we have now? Well, here at Video Cards, and they don't seem to be reporting on somebody else's leak. This seems to be their own information. They are crediting themselves as their own source. And so they're just saying, you know, source is video cards. So I don't know, I guess maybe they have their hands on a 3050 or they know somebody who for sure does, but they've benchmarked this in 3D Mark Time Spy and in Firestrike, and they've compared it against a number of GPUs, including AMD's RX 6500 XT, which by the way, has been currently not only back in stock, but like, it's not, it, I saw these in stock last night before I went to bed and I checked this morning and they're still in stock. Now notice that it's not the $200 models that are in stock. It is the $270 to $300 models that are in stock. So I was also right to predict that we would see these coming in stock, but it just wouldn't be the $200 models. It would be these models. And I said that, you know, if you need to buy a, a new GPU, and you have PCIe Gen 4, these might make sense if you're just allergic to the used market. Because if you go in the used market, you could get a, you know, a card that doesn't have as many drawbacks as this. But again, that's kind of the topic of another video. But just mentioning that these um, are coming in stock here and looks like they're sitting there at that price. I'm hoping they continue to sit here at this price until the prices come down. But anyway, um, <laughs> So up against a 6500 XT, we see roughly a 20% performance jump, unless you're in the Fire Strike uh, benchmark, where it does look like usually RDNA 2 performs well versus Ampere in Fire Strike. And the uh, 3050 is barely beating the 6500 XT in Fire Strike. By the way, I'm assuming this is a PCIe Gen 4 four test on that 6500 XT, just to point that out. But we've got it up against a 1660i, a RTX 3060, a 3050, and a 6500 XT. And Video Cards has this set with the 3050 as the baseline performance. And notice that the 1660 Ti actually beats it by 6% in Fire Strike and beats it by 3% in Times by Extreme. Now, I'd basically call that a tie, but it is technically losing to the much older 1660 Ti. And it looks like it barely, 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 barely beats a 6500 XT at Fire Strike and um, is within 20% of the 6500 XT in time, time Spy Extreme. Although again, we're not expecting the RTX 3050 to have the PCIe Gen 3 issues. So this is giving the 6500 XT um, its uh, full support as far as I can tell. So what does it look like you're gonna be getting for your money? It looks like the 3050 is basically gonna be a 1660 Ti, but with some advantages. It's gonna have eight gigabytes of VRAM and it's gonna have DLSS and it'll also have ray tracing support. Although personally at this performance level, I don't think turning on ray tracing will usually be a very good idea. Although the DLSS could be a good idea if you're trying to use this as a budget 1440p card or as a 1080p card, maybe in the future where you're starting to struggle to run games at reasonable frame rates, even with turning some settings down, 1080p DLSS looks okay, but compared to using it at 1440p or 4K, where I think a lot of times it can be kind of a no-brainer, unless you're really picky, uh, at 1080p, you know, it, it's still does a lot better than FSR, but I'm still not sure I'd usually use it. Now, what do we expect for pricing here? Well, there's a little bit of more good news here coming from video cards. It looks like we have two sources for the mining hash rates 
on this card. And it looks like it's not particularly good. It does have a light hash rate limiter. Uh, video card says that they have a source in China that is putting it at 12.5 mega hashes per second while consuming 73 watts, but that we see a tweet from a Chinese YouTuber who's getting sl slightly better results at 13.66 mega hashes per second at 57 watts. Now, if you're not into crypto mining, so you have no idea what these numbers mean, the nice thing is that they've kind of summarized this into what does that mean as far as the value of the cards go. So uh, at video cards, they're basically saying that this would predict a return on the investment of the GPU. If you bought it at $250 MSRP, that would predict that it would take 500 days of mining to return that investment. And realistically, $250 is not the price that we're gonna see these at. So if you bought it at 350, which I still think is wishful thinking, although bots might be able to get it at that price, um, that would be a 700 day return on investment. And remember that Ethereum should be translate, uh, <laughs> That's a typo. Hey, video cards, fix, fix your thing. Anyway, <laughs> um, we should be seeing the proof of stake for Ethereum in June, 2022. Now I have a lot of thoughts on that. First of all, we've been supposed to see the proof of stake switch for Ethereum for a long time now. It continues to be delayed. So I don't know if we'll really see it in June, but it is meaning that, you know, crypto miners are gonna have to take that into account when they decide on, is it worth buying a card right now for mining if there is that proof of stake transition? If you're not into crypto, you don't know what proof of stake means. It basically means that right now, crypto is mined on GPUs and that has a huge impact on why GPUs cost so much right now. It's not the only thing, but I'd say it's probably the main, the largest factor. There's also all the supply constraints, inflation, tariffs, all sorts of things, just greed from companies. Um, but crypto mining is a huge part of it. When Ethereum switches to proof of stake, it'll no, no longer be mined on GPUs, if this ever really happens. Like I said, it continues to be delayed. Also, we have seen crypto prices, uh, Ethereum prices too, just plummeting recently. I didn't check this morning to see if it's coming back up at all. But if that trend continues down, this is only good news for GPU pricing. So maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel, at least a little bit here. Now, here's my problem with this. Yes, it might take 500 days at MSRP to return the investment, but I think they should also take into account then the card has a resale value. So if you could then just sell the card, then maybe you could make enough profit off of the mining before the 500 days are up, right? You see what I'm saying? Maybe until June to then sell the card, card used, excuse me, and still make, uh, make profit on it. So I don't think that this is necessarily gonna mean that crypto miners won't be interested in this card at all. Compared to the 6500 XT, for example, this was specifically designed to not be good for crypto mining because it has the four gigabytes of VRAM. That's one of the stated reasons, other than just keeping costs down for the four gigabyte limit, is that makes it just not workable as an Ethereum miner. Anyway, so the last thing I wanna talk about is, uh, related to pricing here on this 3050 is, well, okay, so if we pull up a relative performance chart where we're seeing that it's basically slightly slower than a 1660 Ti, but with more features, all right, that would put it right up here against a 1660 Super would be a, a really, uh, you know, very close uh, percentage here, right? So it's right in this kind of a ballpark, probably a little bit better than a 980 Ti. So if we look up a 1660 Super and a 1660 Ti on eBay right now, and I'm just looking at the current buy it now prices. If I wanna just buy this on eBay right now, it's looking like we're up around the $450 uh, dollar range, okay? And this 3050 is going to have more features, more VRAM, and it's you know a, a brand new card. So, oh man, I really, I really think that we're we're gonna see these. I mean, first of all, there's no question they're gonna instantly sell out on day one. But then the question is, is it gonna be like the 6500 XT, where shortly after day one they come back in stock and you can actually buy them on the more expensive models? Well, I think that given. <laughs> Given its performance level and what these are selling for used, I think that the 3050, even with this limited mining interest, I, I still think it's gonna be at least $450 
if not $500 as far as ones that you can find somewhat reasonably. Also given its performance versus a 3060, because the 3060s are generally hard to find below, you know, around $600. The easier to find in stock ones are usually 750, 800, 850, that kind of price range. And this is, as we saw here, getting us, you know, what is this? A, uh, you know, it, it's not quite a 50% increase in performance for the 3060, but it is a, a, a pretty big jump there. Um, also, here, here's the other kind of elephant in the room on all this. Um, I don't think they're going to make very many of these. As far as we know, the 3050 is being manufactured using the same chip as a 3060, but it's like only 60% of the chip enabled. So if, I, and we also don't have any reason to believe that Samsung's process that they're producing this on is struggling. Given that at the uh, upper end chips, right, like the 3080, they're getting such good yields that, th that they're not having to use those chips as 3080s. They're able to do these better like tw uh, 12 gigabyte versions and the 3080 Ti and the 3090, even the 3090 Ti come out, telling us that most of those dies are probably in good enough shape that they don't have serious defects that require them to be cut down a lot. Which, which would affect you know, the model that you get out of it. So if they don't have a lot of 3060 dies that are in such bad shape that they need to be cut down to be a 3050, what is the incentive to have a card like the 3050 actually be produced when you could just make a 3060 and sell it for more money? So I really don't think we're gonna see very many of these. I think this is gonna be more of a paper launch to on paper compete well against the 6500 XT and then whatever cheap uh, Intel GPUs we get coming out later this year. So Nvidia can say that they have a good competitor to those, whereas in reality, those cards are for the most part actually 3060s and being sold at a much higher price. Anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Have an excellent day.